Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. In today's video, I'm, it's, it's less of a, a lecture. Typically what I do is uh, I introduce some idea, I explain it, I give a lecture, but I actually need help. Um, so uh, I'm asking you guys to, to comment and uh, give me some help. The nature of the help that I need is pretty complicated, though, so I will apologize that the, this discussion is definitely not going to be introductory. It's uh, actually rather advanced, and I don't really have too much time to go into all of the theory and the discussion behind it. Um, the discussion, the question that I have is um, situated within a, a, a segment of modal logic that's known as epistemic modal logic, right? Um, within epistemic modal logic, you can make epistemological claims, right? Claims of knowledge, things that you know. Um, and I was speaking with a colleague uh, who, who's a bit of a, a math junkie, and we were talking about um, Zizek. Um, Salvor Zizek is, is a noted uh, philosopher, pop critic, sort of Lacanian um, scholar, and I'm a bit of a uh, Zizek groupie, right? So it's just like, we're talking about Zizek and the whole Rumsfeld's uh, Secretary of State, the former Secretary of uh, uh, Defense, um, Donald Rumsfeld gives his unknown unknown speech, right? So we're talking about Rumsfeld's unknown unknown speech and isn't that cool, blah, 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 it's just weird. Hey, did you hear what Zizak said? Zizak introduced this new thing. He said, uh, uh, Donald Rumsfeld forgot this one point. Wow, wasn't that pretty intuitive of, or insightful of uh, Zizak to bring that up? And we decided, because we're nerds, to uh, symbolize Rumsfeld's argument, right? And the symbolization of Rumsfeld's argument, it'll seem complicated, and unfortunately I'm not going to really be able to explain it because there's a uh, possible world modality involved and a whole bunch of technical stuff which I just can't get into in YouTube. Um, but for those of you that already know what uh, epistemic uh, modal logic is, and you're familiar with Rumsfeld's uh, unknown unknown speech, and you're familiar with Zizek's response to Rumsfeld, then we can have like a really, really heady, uh, sort of nerdy to out discussion. Um, so for everybody else, I apologize, but this video really isn't for the masses, but I really need to know this answer because it's been driving me crazy since last night. So what I'm going to do is explain um, what, what we know and then try and see, <laughs> uh, try and make sense of what Zizak said, right? I, you know, Zizak, when I heard it, I was like, this is ridiculous, right? And I'm like the last guy on the planet to figure out what Zizak said, but... So now that I know what he said, I, I'm trying to symbolize it. Um, okay, so, so this is not, again, this is not a lecture uh, as much as it is, please, someone give me an answer. <laughs> um, all right, so th this is epistemic modal logic and Rumsfeld's Rumsfeld's unknown unknowns and Zizak's um, okay. Uh, sorry for the ridiculous title, but I'm gonna go completely crazy if I don't figure this out. <laughs> so maybe one of you can help me because I can't. Um, all right. So Rumsfeld gives this speech, right? And Rumsfeld talks about. Um, I'm gonna abbreviate U for unknown, we're going to abbreviate K for known. Okay, so U is unknown, K is known. So the first thing that uh, Rumsfeld says in his speech is that we have known knowns, right? There are things that we know that we know, right? Then Rumsfeld says there are things that we know that we do not know, right? There are things that we know that we know, then Rumsfeld says, there are things that we know that we don't know. Then he ends his discussion with things that we don't even know that we don't even know. Right? So things that you know that you know, things that you know that you do not know, and things that you don't even know that you don't know. And he stops there. But Zizak, being, being the philosophical gadfly that he is, Zizak says, you've forgotten one, uh, you've forgotten one thing, Rumsfeld, right? What you should have talked about, spoken about, is the unknown knowns. So before I symbolize this stuff, um, let's let's understand briefly. 
things that I know that I know. I know that I know that my name is Jason. Pretty simple. Things that I know that I don't know. I do not know. I, I know that I do not know all the names of the many people that will be watching this video. Right? I don't know that. And I know that I don't know that. Things that I don't know that I don't know. Right? Well, I can't even articulate that. Right? It's ineffable. Right? I can't even say it. I don't know that I don't know. And then I just remain quiet. Right? I don't even know. Right? And he was talking with respect to defense. Right? We know that we know that the terrorist cell is here. We know that we do not know how many bombs that they have. And we don't know that we don't know something, and that's like the doomsday scenario. We don't even know what we don't know, and that's where we're vulnerable type argument. Okay? I'm less interested in that, though. Right? Um, Zizek comes around, and Zizek gives this really insane, <laughs> this is one of the best critiques I've ever heard. Zizek's like, oh, Rumsfeld, you forgot, right? And if you think logically, right, it has to follow. But what is this unknown known? And Zizek gives you a spiel about what the, the unknown known is. Um, another version of it, and you know, in a quick discussion with uh, the colleague that I was telling you about earlier that I was speaking with uh, yesterday, um, uh, Plato's uh, Mino came up, right? And in the Mino, um, there's a slave who um, doesn't know that he knows, I think it's the Pythagorean theorem, right? So that would be an example. It's, you know, um, Plato talked about the unknown known. He wasn't as concise and as clear as Zizek was, but in philosophical history, it's been discussed. Um, the problem is, however, right, and this is where in our discussion we realize, right, that this can be symbolized, right, in using epistemic modal logic. Now, I, I'm, like I said, I apologize sincerely for not being able to go into the discussion, and I'm not going to go into all the meanings of the terms and possible worlds, semantics, and all that stuff, because it's just too complicated. Um, but I need to understand something. We can, I can symbolize this, right? I can symbolize this. I can symbolize this, but I don't know how to symbolize this, and I think that Zizek is right. If he's right, it should be able to be symbolized, right? And, and furthermore, it's not even just Zizek. If you look in Plato's Mino, Plato discusses the unknown known. He doesn't say that in that terms, but that's really what it's about, right? Metempsychosis is sort of this realization of things that you didn't know that you know, right? I think Zizek situates it in terms of sort of Lacanian psychoanalysis or something like that, right? But regardless of whatever it is, let's symbolize this, right? I'm having difficulty symbolizing this. So... What is the known known? How would that be symbolized uh, using epistemic modal logic? Epistemic modal logic, K stands for some agent knows some state of affairs, right? So if we suppose that Rumsfeld, right, Donald Rumsfeld, knows um, some state of affairs called delta, right? Donald, and I, as I, again, I said, if you don't understand this, this is going to be complete foreign, but I'm, I'm looking for an answer this time. I'm not giving the answers. This time I need an answer, right? So if we say that uh, Donald, Donald Rumsfeld knows some state of affairs delta, then what we're saying is that Donald Rumsfeld, right, knows, Donald Rumsfeld knows that he, Donald Rumsfeld, knows the state of affairs delta, right? So you can symbolize this, right? You can say if we're talking about the known knowns, then you can say Donald Rumsfeld knows some state of affairs delta means that he, Donald Rumsfeld, knows that he knows the state of affairs delta, right? Um, or you can symbolize it um, using sort of the negation, right? If you, and I actually, I wrote it too big, I need some space, right? So let's just write that again, right? A little tighter. So if we say that uh, Donald Rumsfeld knows some state of affairs, that's actually too small. If we say that Donald Rumsfeld knows some state of affairs delta, then what we're saying, right? Then what we're saying is Donald Rumsfeld knows that he knows some state of affairs delta, right? Or you could say that if Donald Rumsfeld knows some state of affairs delta, then you're saying that Donald Rumsfeld doesn't know that he doesn't know some state of affairs delta, right? And again, that's just what it is, right? So. So that's fine, right? Donald Rumsfeld knows some state of affairs delta. He doesn't even know that he doesn't know. Okay. So the next thing is, okay, the known unknowns, right? The known unknowns. How would you symbolize, using epistemic modal logic, the known unknowns? Well, let's look at what Rumsfeld said. We know that we don't know how many bombs they have, right? So that would be uh, symbolized as the following, right? Uh, well, I would, Donald Rumsfeld would not know, right, some state of affairs delta, but he knows that he doesn't know the state of affairs delta, right? So he doesn't know some state of affairs de delta, 
but Rumsfeld knows that Rumsfeld does not know. He knows that he doesn't know. He knows that he doesn't know. He knows that he doesn't know this state of affairs delta. Okay, so that can be so symbolized. Okay, so then we go to the unknown unknown. A little bit more tricky, but it can still be symbolized, right? Um, the unknown unknown, Donald Rumsfeld does not know that Donald Rumsfeld doesn't even know some state of affairs delta, right? So if Donald Rumsfeld doesn't know that he doesn't know the state of affairs delta, whatever that is, then what do we say? We say Donald Rumsfeld knows, right, he has knowledge that he, that he does not know this state of affairs delta, right? He knows that he doesn't know that thing. Okay. Again, this would, to explain all of this, the meaning of all of this would take like maybe three hours. So I, I apologize that this is not going to make sense to, to a lot of people. Maybe in me describing, writing it out, maybe you could catch on quickly. So that's that. The problem I'm having is with this. I don't know how to symbolize this, right? So for you mathematicians, you logicians out there, uh, people who understand uh, epistemic model logic, please give me uh, your comments, right? It's a very technical question that I'm asking, but I don't know how to... Zizek is... Uh, he's, he's, a little, he's a little gadfly, that Zizek, right? It's like... Zizek makes a great point, the unknown known. And, and you know, the Lacanian spiel and all that, or even, even, um, even Plato's uh, Mino, I'm less concerned with, but I don't, in an argument, right, when I listen to someone talk, I'm symbolizing what they're saying and looking at the structure of their analysis, right? So this is basically what, G, uh, what, what Rumsfeld said. I get it, right? We can do Rumsfeld. That's not a problem, right? What I'm having a difficulty doing is symbolizing what Zizek said, right? And I think there's basis to it. There's obviously basis because Plato said it 2,000 years before Zizek said it, right? But I, I just don't know how to symbolize it. Um, now, this part is, and like I said, I'm not lecturing, so I'm going to sort of just freestyle it <laughs> uh, and try to figure this out, but I, I don't think I haven't found anything right. Uh, and if you know how to answer it, then help me. So, like I said, this is not a lecture. I'm not telling you that this is the answer. It's probably going to be wrong, but at least you'll see how I'm trying to think through it. Um, so, uh, and everything that i found is, has been wrong so far. So, if, if you do not know that you know, I don't even know how to start it, right? It would be something like, um, it would be something like this, right? Uh, you do not know. So it's like Rumsfeld doesn't know. He doesn't, he, Rumsfeld doesn't know that he knows, right? That doesn't make any sense, right? I, I, and that's where I get stuck, right? Because you, you, it would seem like you would say Rumsfeld doesn't know that Rumsfeld knows. But that's where I get stuck, right? Because it seems like if you look at Rumsfeld doesn't know that he knows, this looks like A and not A. That's what it looks like, right? And, and that's a contradiction, right? That, that you can't say that. Um, <laughs> so I'm totally blown out the water. Like, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to symbolize that, right? Um, and I just get stuck there. Um... He knows that he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't know that he knows. It's different from this. You would think it's the same, right? You would think it's just the same as this, right? Well, this is nothing other than this flipped, but it's not, right? This is saying that he knows that he doesn't have some knowledge of something, right? Meaning that his knowledge is of its lack, right? Uh, Plato says this, uh, Socrates in Plato, Plato's dialogue says this, right? I know that I don't know that this is the whole sort of, this is the whole foundation of philosophy, right? That's what we all do as philosophers, right? And this is sort of how it's epistemically uh, represented in modal logic. But I don't, I can't make sense, I can't, I don't know how to even begin when we start with the unknown, right? If we're talking about we don't know that we don't know, then that's simple. But how do you symbolize that you don't know that you do know? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so I get stuck here. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh... That's something I can't figure out. Um, so, um, for you uh, mathematicians and logicians that understand epistemic modal logic, please give me an answer to this. I, I don't know uh, what it is. 
Normally, I have answers to give, or I can inform and educate. Unfortunately, in this particular lecture, I, uh, and it's not even a lecture, right? In, in this particular question, um, I'm asking someone to uh, symbolize sort of the argument between the, the theoretical argument. They're, they're, I don't, they haven't spoken, right? But the theoretical argument between Zizek and and, uh, and Rumsfeld, right? Rumsfeld, unknown, unknowns. Uh, he talks about these three possibilities, which can easily be symbolized. Zizek responds to that, says, "Hey, you forgot this one thing." The unknown known, his explanation is pretty, pretty damn good. Um, and you can sort of reference or justify his explanation in the tradition of philosophy and Plato and so on. But when it comes to the symbolization, I just, and it's my lack of understanding, it might be a very simple answer to this, but I don't know, I can't find any way to uh, um, symbolize my not knowing that I do know, right? I don't, I don't know that I do know. Um, which is not at all like I, I do know that I don't know. It's it sounds like, oh, well, I'm just flipping flipping it, but it's not like that at all, right? So I don't know how to do that part. Um, if you know how to do it, please, please send me a response. Um, type in a comment, attach something, send me a link, send me a message, and I'll read whatever you have to say, and it'll be, it'll be pretty interesting, and I'll do a thank you video to whoever can tell me the answer to uh, this. So a little bit of a YouTube challenge for uh, the viewers. Um, Sorry, that's all I got for today. Uh, with that being stated, uh, said, I'm uh, Dr. Jason J. Campbell. I uh, apologize I didn't teach you anything in this video, but please someone teach me something. Thanks for watching my video. Goodbye.